Hey everybody, um, hopefully this isn't too loud, but hopefully it's also better than what we've been doing before. Um, I just wanted to do a couple of things with um, Trinitarian reading. The first thing I would like to do is, if you have not watched the Microelectron Mark, please do so. Um, hopefully it will give you some ideas about Trinitarian reading. Second thing I'd like to say, yeah, I sort of, I don't know, set you up. Um, Here's the deal. Uh, in the Christian tradition, up until really maybe the 17, 1800s, so for the first, you know, 15, 1600 years of the church, uh, w interpretation of Scripture was something was called pre-critical, or we call it pre-critical now. And in ancient interpretation of Scripture, there was a bunch of different levels of reading. So there's like the literal reading. So like this is what the story says, right? This is what happened in the story. Uh, then there were things like uh, figurative, re figurative reading, um, moral reading, like you read in order to find the uh, the ethical lesson of the text. There was also uh, typological reading. So if you were reading in the Old Testament, you would look for types of Christ, really. So you'd, you'd um, what would be an example? Um, oh, like Adam would be a type of Christ, right? So uh, the things that happened to Adam are prefiguring. They're showing ultimately what uh, Christ will do uh, later on. And so Irenaeus, for example, talks a lot about recapitulation. So what the Adam is, you know, the is the first Adam. Uh, Irenaeus uses Paul's language here. And in the first Adam, this, 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 and this happen. In the second Adam, this, 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 and this happen. Uh, recapitulating, going back and, and fulfilling in himself the types of things that happened in the first Adam, but uh, now doing it um, as a divine human person and summing up in human life uh, what was lacking or what uh, failed the first time around. So that would be like typological reading. The final level would be allegorical reading where, um, so for example, um, an allegorical reading of like the Good Samaritan, you might say like the Samaritan is the church. Or no, the 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 injured man is the sir, is the church, and the good Samaritan is Christ, who comes along and you know helps the the church and and gives her life after uh, a bunch of other people come by and ignore her. So you're looking, you're not you're not necessarily paying attention to uh, the you're you're taking the story and you're saying that it represents something higher. Okay, with those types of interpretation going on in the background, you can see how um, what happens with Genesis 18, what what the forum post is on this week, is very what was very common in ancient interpretation was to see Trinity. Um, perhaps the most famous example of this is Origen. Uh, so Origen um, talks about how yeah the three men standing under the tree are representing the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, which is very much what, uh, as I've been reading your forum post, what a lot of you have been have been talking about. And what what's really impressed me about your forum post, and I want to uh, especially call out Tony, I really liked um, some of your thinking there. Um, and who was it who was responding to Tony? Um, I don't rem I don't recall. But uh, in that in that particular thread, I I liked the way that people were thinking critically about, well, what would it mean if if the three men under the tree are the the Trinity? What? How is that possible? And, and you're thinking about that because you're thinking about what the what the Trinity is, and the Trinity are not people, or at least not. I mean, we might say they're persons, but they're not people, right? So it's weird to think how how would the Father be a man? That doesn't make sense. That's not part of if you're thinking Trinitarianly. The Father is the one who wills all of creation, who does create, and who wills the plan of salvation, right? God's somehow removed, the Father is somehow removed or outside of uh, the creation, such that when we do have theophanies in the Old Testament, theophany is when uh, God, uh, an appearance of God in the Old Testament, they're always very strange, right? It's like, you know, Moses sees a bush that's on fire, and then Moses is like, afterwards Moses is like, yeah, that was God in the fire, right? Or Elijah will, you know, he sees a storm, he feels an earthquake, but it's in the silence, they got, that Elijah says that's where God was, right? Speaking, I assume, of the Father, Yahweh, the, the God of Israel, because the God of Israel is not like a person that you can just touch and, and, and hang out with, right? Uh, which brings up the question of what's going on with Adam and Eve in the garden. The point is is that uh, 
it's very strange if you're thinking in terms of the Trinity to think about the Trinity, uh, the Father and the Spirit, especially being people. Moreover, it's weird to think about the second person of the Trinity being a person uh, in the Old Testament, right? And one of you brought this out. It's like Jesus hasn't been born yet. The Son's not a human being the way that we think about human beings, right? Something else is going on there. It's uh, it's hard to, you know, put our finger exactly on what it is. Uh, so if you you should you should check it out. I'll, I'll try and find a link to um, the section on origin where he talks about uh, this particular passage just for your you know edification. You can see what one of the great um, interpreters of the of the scriptures uh, in the church tradition said. Um, and it's very interesting because he, he tries to nuance things. He's like, this isn't, it's not like the Father and the Son and the Spirit are hanging out underneath a tree, right? Uh, rather, this is demonstrating, and he, he says, I think, the economy of the Trinity. He, he suggests that, that the interaction or the way that these three interact with Abraham uh, show us, they're like a type or an allegory for us for how it is that the Trinity um, interacts with each other and interacts with um, the creation, it's very. It's it's not what you might expect. It's it's not ham-fisted. It's not like, it's it's really nuanced. It's it's thoughtful. Now that brings us to um, present day. So present day Trinitarian thinking. Um, you'll still see. You'll hear a lot in pulpits, especially in evangelical um, and many Pentecostal charismatic churches. Where so, for example, in uh, Daniel, right? There's the story where. Um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are in the, the furnace of flames, right? And everyone's looking, and they see someone else with them. And very often people will say, oh, that's Jesus, right? Uh, that's a very common type of uh, interpretation of that text. But as we said, that's a little bit weird, because Jesus hasn't been born yet. Jesus, doesn't, Jesus isn't a person until Mary gives birth to Jesus, and Jesus has grown up. How, how could Jesus be there beforehand? People will say, well, maybe it's the um, the second person of the Trinity somehow, you know, appearing um, with, like, I don't know what, like, special flesh. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, my point is, is that after, in, in, in a critical age, where we, where we think critically about text, and we're trying to take stories seriously, and we're trying to take the creed seriously, maybe the best way to uh, read these texts is not to just try and point out, oh, there's uh, the Father, oh, there's the Son, oh, there's the Holy Spirit, as if we can sort of go back under the Old Testament and, 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 and place our creedal confession all over it. Rather, what I want to suggest to you is a different type of Trinitarian reading. And I think this is important because it, and this goes again back to uh, Chris's research project, it goes towards demonstrating that the God of the Old Testament, uh, the Creator God, the Liberator of Israel, is in fact the same person in character as the Father of Jesus Christ. That the revelation of Jesus Christ, who is God in flesh, uh, is absolutely consistent with the story so far, as it were. That what we have in the Old Testament is genuine, real revelation of the same God who has the same plans and the same who who sends His will to the Son, who then blesses the Son with the the Spirit at His baptism. We want to say that these are perfectly consistent in every way. The revelation of God um, changes based on historical circumstances, but the character of God, the nature of God, is always one and the same. And that's what I think um, uh, contemporary theology is looking for when we're looking for Trinitarian creedal readings. Um, there's a couple reasons for this. Uh, the most important is that uh, in biblical scholarship over the last 300 years, and you may or may not be aware of this, but uh, critical scholars have basically reignited the Marcionite uh, heresy. Marcion was an, uh, a Gnostic in the early church who basically said, yeah, the Father of Jesus Christ, that's not God. Uh, the Old Testament, that's a bunch of lies. Uh, just look at it. Look at it, right, guys? I mean, there, there, there's nothing that this God is doing that's in any way similar to what Jesus is talking about, loving your enemies. This God's just murdering them, right? And the church fathers expelled him for heresy. He said, no, you're just not getting it. And one of the ways they tried to demonstrate that he was wrong was by doing allegorical, typological, figurative readings. Um, in contemporary biblical studies, the, they reignited the Marcionite heresy. They, they did critical work in the Old Testament, and they basically said, dude, first, we don't do allegorical, typological, figurative. That's not how you read texts. We read uh, the plain sense. You might have heard this. Uh, we read literally 
we read um we get the author's intent sometimes you'll hear uh if you're reading these ways then you can't just look at the three guys underneath the tree and say oh father son spirit instead you have to read as if this is something else um and if you do that over time you begin to see that uh it's very very possible to posit that the god of the old testament is very very different in character and nature than the god of the new testament um and so Trinitarian creedal reading is an attempt now, in the present day, to take seriously the economy of the Trinity, the relationship between Father, Son, Spirit, eternally, as they interact with each other, and as they demonstrate their actions to the, to the, to the world. Um, and by doing that, we begin to see, <coughs> at a very deep level, that what you have in Jesus is indeed the, um, is indeed the character and nature of, of God the Father. Th thank you. My daughter just gave me my wife's water. Fantastic. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, I love your forum posts, and there's no way that I would in any way ding any of you for anything that you're doing. I think it's great, and I love that uh, you're doing um, Trinitarian readings and, and whatnot, and maybe even locating a theophany where the Trinity appears in the Old Testament. I think that's wonderful stuff, and I don't want to knock it at all. Uh, I think it's valuable and helpful for your churches. At the same time, I think there's another level that I'd like to push you to, and you don't have to do it this week, and or maybe you do. It's, it's totally up to you. Uh, you know, you get what you put in. But I would love you, I'd love it if you begin to think about in what way is the character of the triune God being demonstrated in this text. And I just want to highlight, I think it was Emmanuel, who I'm not sure where he... I mean, it looks like maybe, uh, Emmanuel, you looked at, at a commentary or something like this. But what he, he noticed was that um, one of the main points of Genesis 18 from a socio-historical perspective, that's sociological and historical perspective, if you're looking at the life um, and the values of the Middle East, the ancient Near East, um, at the time of, you know, what, between 1500 and 600 B.C., one of the most important... Uh, values that the people had was hospitality and that in in this uh in this text in this story we see abraham being um genuinely hospitable well i was wondering if uh, maybe emmanuel would take that next level and say hey in what respect is the trinity itself um an eternal example of hospitality in what way does um uh the father by sending the Son and the Spirit to the world demonstrate his what eternal welcome to a people who are far off, who in some ways are his enemies, right? Maybe it's the case that because God is in some way present with these three men, um, maybe Abraham's uh, welcome to them is a demonstration of the divine character. Maybe the way that uh, the divine character um, comes to this earth and we as human beings are invited to participate in divine life. Maybe that's what Abraham's doing. Um, and reading that way is looking at the, what, the character of God in, in God's triune self with God's various um, uh, natures and essences and whatnot, attributes, and seeing the way that those things play out in texts. Now that's a... I want to I want to suggest to you that that's a very it's like a it's a back and forth kind of dialectical way of reading scripture because on the one hand we're learning about who God is and what the character of the triune God is by reading the texts right we don't know God apart from these texts at the same time then once we've decided maybe God is like this we're looking for that character and that nature and that attribute to be exemplified in the texts um, so that's just a little uh, brief. Uh, take on Trinitarian reading. I hope that the background noise isn't too crazy. I hope the mic didn't pick up too much of my daughter yelling. Um, well, that's what that is. Okay, so guys, tweet, email, um, post on forums, uh, post in the course questions. Anything you have uh, uh, question-wise about this, uh, I guess maybe this is sort of like my general forum response at Saturday before you guys have finished all of your back and forth, um, but I hope it's helpful. All right, thanks.